Thank you. Um, I'm going to bang on about the thing I've been banging on for 20 years and I banged on about yesterday, so there'll be a bit more banging on um, <clears throat> and I'll show, you a, uh, I'll show you a couple of demonstrations. I'd like to say first of all this is APL running on the Mac. I'm going to um, run a live session um, but I've got some canned input which I just press a button to produce. But this is thanks to Callum and Gil and co uh, and their excellent work on Ride. Uh, this is becoming my APL of choice now because I have a Mac I was having to use uh, uh, virtual machines or remote desktops to get the Windows version and it's now uh, matured to a state. It's still got some way to go but it's at a state now where it's nicer for me to use this than to go through the uh, rigmarole of um, uh, going to a uh, uh, emulating a Windows version. Okie doke. So let me see if this works. So I'm going. Uh, there's a bit of banging on. Um, the the with the introduction of the at operator, it removed the last uh, reason I had in the defunds workspace. I've spent 20 years writing the same workspace. Um, and it's the last, <coughs> the uh, only time I needed to use uh, procedural techniques was with <coughs> indexed assignment. And uh, with the introduction of the at operator, I've gone through my code in the defense workspace. The defense workspace is code supplied by dozens of people, but the things that I've written. Um, I've been modified, so they are now denotative, and I'll explain what that is in a minute, rather than procedural uh, in, in style. And it's a change of mindset. So, uh, procedural and denotative uh, have uh, two different mindsets, two different uh, software layers. When you're programming, you swap in the pack, um, what do you call it, Car you either swap in a procedural cartridge between your ears or you swap in a denotative uh, uh, cartridge and both have their place. Um, uh, d uh, procedural programming is a lot about the representation and manipulation of state. Uh, you can make a buck out of representing state as Oracle Inc. Um, you know, they've, they've, they've done well out of um, representing state and the people, the DVLC, the people who keep records of your car registration numbers, they, they're interested in that. But a lot of, um, a subset of programming, you can switch to a much pleasanter world where um, you're just talking about definitions and you can forget about the passing of time and... Uh, uh, <coughs> sequencing. So, procedural, when you, when you have your procedural cartridge in, you are aware of sequence. You are aware of the sequence of operations taking place. First do this, then do this. Um, and uh, the mutation of variable state. The denotative, um, you make a temporal uh, without regard to time. Uh, when you're programming in a denotative way, you are just uh, developing definitions, that's all. you just uh, <coughs> uh, definitions of functions. And when you have all your definitions uh, um, complete, you can apply a definition of a function to an argument, and that will define a result for you. And I, I keep banging on about this because I think a lot of us, including me, f uh, because we were brought up in the procedural way of programming, find it hard to make this jump. So in the DFUNS workspace, I went through and found, I, I did a search for right bracket assignment and right paren assignment and found where I was using... Um, uh, indexed assignment, and um, I tried to change the code so that it would, um, it would, it would not be 
Uh, it would not use that. It would use a, pres uh, a denotative uh, uh, definition. I, I should explain. Uh, I, my apologies to the 40 or so people who've, who've already heard this pitch who came to the workshop yesterday. Um, d d denotative is, is a word, is a recycled word. It has a good history. Um, it, it, I started adopting it for two reasons. It's slightly broader than functional. Uh, people talk about functional programming, which where you, try and con you try to concentrate on the definition of functions. So the, the denotative definition, I like to think, is slightly broader. Um, it, you can d define functions, arrays, operators, uh, as long as you're, you're working in terms of uh, um, definitions. And the way you spot a denotative programmer, as I keep saying, is somebody who, let me see if I dare do this, who pronounces this glyph, this right pointing <coughs> finger glyph, as denotes. So if I say, I would say A, let's say N, so it's an integer, denotes zero. N denotes zero is a way to say that. If, you're, if you've got this uh, mindset. Right, so I'd, uh, I'd take, I, I trawled through the Defen's uh, workspace, so the things I'd converted. And it, the, the tricky, the, the difficulty was to find uh, functions that were, were, weren't going to take you the remainder of this talk to explain what they did. Um, so I wanted to find a, a simple example. And the simplest I could find, it's not particularly simple, was a function for finding the shortest path through a, net, a graph or a network. So given a network of connections, uh, start from here, wind up here, wh what's the shortest way through? And I think that was um, Dijkstra who, uh, yeah, Dijkstra um, was the first person, person to publish a, a good algorithm for this. D Dijkstra was not a fan of APL. Uh, so here's an example of a network. Um, so what, oh, let me see if I can use it. So what this is, this is just a little network with one, two, three, four, five vertices or nodes, and you can see the connections. So you can get from node one to node two. Uh, you can get back and forth from two to three. You can go three to four. Um, you, so you can, you can see the connections. So for example, um, if I wanted to go from one to two, that's, that's a, a one step. If I want to go from two back to one, I can't go this way. I have to go to three, I can't get up to one, I have to go to four, and then I can get round. Um, this is a very, very simple network. Um, let me, so, and this is the way we represent, uh, this is a way, a good way of representing this network in APL. So it's a nested array. This is in uh, origin one. So this is to get from node, node one, I can get to two or three. From node one, I can get to two or three. From node two, I can only get to three, and, and so on and so on. And an interesting thing is if you're an origin zero kind of guy, so this is, uh, this is, G, this, is the, this network. If I want to know what, if I want to convert that network to an origin zero network, there it is in uh, origin zero. You just subtract one. So this says from node zero I can get to node one or two, from node one I can get to two. It, it's as easy as that. And the, and the algorithms just work uh, on that. Right, so here's an example. If I... Um, so this says, this function... Let me move this up a little bit, if I can. Uh, so given graph G, uh, what's the path from... 2 to 1, and there it is. Uh, let me find graph G again. So to get from 2 to 1, you go 2 to 3 to 4 to 1. That's the, an that's the answer. And yeah? yeah. Uh, now, here's a slightly... Uh, the, the way we can do this, the algorithm in APL, this is a high-tech animation, which is a bunch of edit windows that I'm going to close one after the other. Here's a different network. This is a slightly more complex network. <laughs> Uh, but for instance, if I want to get from here to here, 
then there are various ways I could do it, but the shortest one is probably that way. To get from here to here, there are two equally short ways. And the way this algorithm works, because we're in APL, we use a parallel um, breadth-first search. And the way we do that is to say, from zero, looking at our definition, to get from the first node, uh, in this, this is, not, this is not G, this is another one. Um, from the first node, I can get, in one step, I can get to these two. And in two steps, I can get to these three nodes. And in three steps, <coughs> I can get to here. And in four steps, I can get to here. And what you can see is there's a kind of wave front of... Uh, uh, it, it, it opens a wave through the graph, and so in only six, five, six, in six parallel steps, I can explore that whole graph. And <coughs> what the algorithm does is, when it's, it, when it's doing this, it, it does a parallel search, <coughs> it, um, uh, um, and it logs... So at each point, it logs in what we call a spanning tree. When we go from here to here, it logs that um, it, the, the backlink. It logs the backlink. So the backlink from here to here was there, and the backlink from here to here. So this node backlink to zero. This node backlink to zero. Uh, uh, th this node backlink to this node. I'll sh we'll show that in uh, in a moment. So what I'm going to do is show you the procedural coding of this, and I'll just trace this. Um, <coughs> now, we're, we're not going to go through every line of APL in this, but I want to make a couple of points. This is the whole um, algorithm, and what is interesting about this is this line down at the bottom, and this is an indexed assignment. And the way this algorithm works, it keeps a spanning tree, um, it's easier, more dexterous with this, it keeps a spanning tree, <coughs> and then as the wave front, it calculates the new wave front somewhere, where's, uh, here's a wave, and then at the, all the points in the wave, uh, at that nodes in that tree, it links in the back thing. So this is a relatively global variable outside the function. And <coughs> it explores all the nodes when there are... When there are um, uh, and it's looking to get from this node to this node. And when it's got this node... In fact, because it's APL, we can give it a set of starting nodes and a set of finishing nodes, and when uh, there's a path from one of the starting to one of the finishing, it stops. So if, t if two is in the tree, then we, we this, this just reverses the path uh, to do this. So, goodness, the t time flies when you're enjoying yourself. Um, the, the trick is, <coughs> how do we remove this dependency to give it a procedure, a, a declarative, denotative um, style. <coughs> and what I'll do is to... Well, I can just run this, can't I? There you go, that, that works. Um, I can... Uh, well, the, the, I, I won't do this. What I will do... Uh, what this is going to do is to uh, delete trailing blanks from the removal of the comments from the quad CR of each of these two functions. So it will display them side by side, and we can compare the <coughs> procedural to the denotative uh, coding. And they're virtually the same, <coughs> except that where down here um, I have an uh, index assignment, here I have an at function. That, that's the major bit if you're just looking at the code level. But the conceptual level is that tree in the de denotative style is passed as a, an argument into the uh, function. And so 
whereas I would tend to read this as a loop, do this and go round again, for, for this style of programming, I can just read it as a single recursive statement. What I can say is, given a starting tree, um, which is a, which is a, a bunch of uh, neg twos, except for a neg one at the initial um, uh, node, then <coughs> I can... All this, this statement here produces an incremental tree, uh, an incremental spanning tree. And so, given a spanning tree and a node or set of nodes of the, um, uh, of the graph, it will produce an incremental tree, and then I can just call with the, with the uh, new set of vertices the, uh, an increment. I, I can just call this recursively. And this is... Um, so, although there's not very much um, d difference in the code, most of this code, deliberately, I, I've kept the code the same. Um, <clears throat> but the conceptually, this is quite, the, the way to read this is quite differently. There's just one recursive definition. And it's like, re the, the recursive definition is like um, a, de a, a definition of factorial is, um, uh, factorial n, if n is, uh, 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 one, it's one, otherwise it's factorial, it's n times factorial n minus one. That's the end of the story. You don't need to go through all the iterative steps in a definition. So this is, uh, this is what this is. Now, having done this, <coughs> there are some benefits. First of all, the benefits for the... Any kind of compilation process <coughs> can... Um, look at this code, and because it's pure code, it can do um, some manipulations on it, some code reductions that aren't available to this code. For example, it can spot that this variable here is referenced only here, because this variable is different, this, this is an inner variable, and so, for example, it doesn't need to name this, it could use, and we could just put this expression instead of this name here. So it could massage this code to remove this. Ditto here, it, c it doesn't really need to name this. So we can do a lot, uh, I've n used these names to make this more readable. Okay. Um, but the, one of the nice things about having uh, pure functions without procedures in, is that it opens the, um, the implementation, it makes available a lot of quite beautiful techniques of, of code reduction. And there's a whole body of um, computer science techniques that has been uh, exploited and promoted by the functional programming community called graph reduction. And uh, <coughs> they uh, see the, this code as a network of uh, uh, connections and you can massage this graph. <coughs> you can do a lot of uh, work on this. As soon as you get something like an assignment to a glo I'm going to call this global, uh, a relatively global uh, um, uh, variable, you're mutating global variable, then life gets more difficult. It's probably possible and there's a huge advantage for people to do it. But this is much easier to deal with. But that, that's not your problem. Your, your um, reason for doing this is if it, it makes your code easier to understand. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say. Are there any questions? No? Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat>